Thank you worship team. Good morning and welcome back to the Shut In But Not Shut Up series. Today's reading will be led by Sister Emerald and it will be taken from Isaiah 55 verses 1 to 11. Following the scripture, Yvonne Johnson Elliott will be ministering to us in song. Let me greet the church on this wonderful day that the Lord has made and we thank him once again for his blessings. The scripture reading is taken this morning from Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1 to 11. Here begins the word of the Lord. Lo, everyone that thirsteth come he to the waters, and he that has no money come he buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which satisfy not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight in its fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me here, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a mer for witness to the people, a leader a command and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that know it's not, a nation that know not, Thee shall run unto thee, because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my words that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, for it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I send it. Here endeth the word of the Lord. Amen.
that I'll see his glory. If you wish to put in any prayer requests, please follow the instructions on the end slide. Thank you for joining us on another Sunday as we give honour unto the Spirit of the Lord. If you can get your Bibles and turn with me to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 10. The bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Amen to the word of the Lord. This passage of scripture was set during the time of the Israelites. They had completely forgotten about God's grace, God's goodness towards them. And they were just going on with daily life as it were leaving God out of it. But I want to let you know this morning that your life is incomplete without Christ. Without Christ, there is something missing. But I also want to let you know that there is a special place reserved for you 
in the kingdom of God. You may be struggling right now. You may not know where to turn right now. You may not be happy with your life right now. God is missing. God is missing from your life. The Israelites were warned by God that their lives were in disrepair. Their lives needed changing. And for many of us today, our lives do need to be changed. We need to identify what we're doing, where we're going. And for many of us, it becomes confusing. We don't know where we are. We're discouraged. We're depressed. We're disorientated. But I'm asking you to look to God this morning. For in Christ, there is peace and there is contentment and there is joy. There is a place for you in God that has been uniquely fashioned to fit you. It's not a place that I can fill. It's a place that only you can fill in God. If you look into your gardens, I'm sure you'll find somewhere there a brick wall. And the wall has been used in this passage of scripture to tell the Israelites that the bricks are fallen down. But we will build with hewn stones. Bricks have been used in this scripture because I believe bricks are manufactured and if you look at a wall all the bricks are the same size majority of them are the same color they're the same shape they're sharp edged and they're held in place by cement and I believe that we can look into our lives we can look at the fabric of the church and use this same analogy of a wall in the walls of the church, we don't want everybody to be the same. We don't want everybody to look the same. We want you to be you. We want you to fill that unique place that God has for you, that God has reserved for you, that special place that fits you. It's said that the bricks are fallen down. If you look at a wall, and the, everything in the, all the bricks are held together, one on top of another, some overlapping. But the thing that holds them together is the cement in between these bricks. I remember one time that we had a wall in the garden and it had fallen down. It couldn't stand the winds and the rains that had been falling at the time. It was a time of great storms. And at times we have great storms that fall in our lives and they cause us to be dismembered and fragmented and scattered, especially in our minds, in our thoughts. But God, in the midst of your storm, can bring peace. He can still keep things together. He can still hold you. He can still make things function. Christ is missing from your life this morning. Bricks are good, yes, but bricks have flaws. Bricks are strong, yes, but they have to be put together. They have to be cemented together. And if a brick falls out of place, you can only find another brick to fill that space. And it would have to be of the same size, the same colour, the same sharp edges to be placed in that cement to make that wall look as if it is complete. This morning, if you find that your life is incomplete, it can be complete in Christ. It says that the walls were fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. Hewn stones. Why stone? And not opposed to rebuilding the walls with brick. Brick. We know about brick. As I said, bricks can be flawed. They can have bubbles. They can have cracks. Sometimes the cement doesn't hold. But if we're looking at stone, stone is a natural product. Stone is something that is hard, it's durable, it's something that can be relied upon. If I put a stone in place and put another one on it and another one on it 
and another one on it, it will not easily fall down. And if it falls down, it's not going to break. This is how I believe Christ wants us to be in the kingdom of God. He wants us to have strength. He wants us to have stability. He wants us to be held in place. He wants us to be joined together so that we will be able to stand. One stone by itself will be easily moved. But if you put three, four, five stones together, pack them tightly together and the wind should come and the rain would fall, it will not easily be moved. And that's how we want to be in the kingdom of God, not easily moved. Now, stones are of all different shapes or different sizes. And that's how we are in the kingdom of God. Different shapes, different sizes, different colours in the kingdom of God. That's the picture that we want the church to have, to show that it's a place for everyone and be encouraged this morning, there is a place there for you. You may have an excuse, you may think that I'm not good enough, I don't fit in, I don't dress the same as you, I don't talk the same as you, my temper's too short, I do a lot of knee-jerk reactions. But if we look into the Bible, there are many examples there of people who felt that they were not good enough to be used of God. Let us look at Moses. Moses said he couldn't speak. He stuttered. How could he go before people and say anything? But God told him that he was the person he wanted to be used. He gave Aaron to help him, to Aaron to be his mouthpiece. And look at what Moses did through the help of God. He took them through the Red Sea. He led them. That's what God can do in our lives. The song says, oh, to be used of God, to sing, to pray, to show someone the way. You may not think you have anything to offer to God this morning, but yes, you do. God can use you. God can use whatever you have. The most important thing is to make yourself available unto him so that you can be used of God. Look at Samson. Samson was a man of great strength who followed after God, but he messed up somewhere along the way. And many of us feel that we mess up along the way and there's no way that God can use us. We look at the story of Samson and from many different angles, but the angle I want us to look at this morning is that God touched him again. God had mercy upon him again. His hair re regrew and he had strength. No matter that he had wandered far from God, he still knew that the source of his strength came from God and he returned unto God. No matter his past, because your past does not define who you are. And God is not put off by our past. It doesn't stop his power. It doesn't stop his anointing. It doesn't stop him using you for his honor and for his glory. Because at the end of the day, that's why we were created. To give God honor, to give him praise. To bring others into his kingdom. Samson was touched again by the hand of God. His hair with grew. With, his hair regrew and he had strength to do what he needed to do. So no matter this morning, if you feel that you're a mess, your mess can be a message for someone else today. Hallelujah. God can touch you. God can use you. No matter how you're low in esteem, no matter how you feel that nobody cares about you, you're worthless. You're not worthy to be used. You can't even come into the house of God because you don't feel that that is the place for you. Thank God he doesn't go by feelings. God just wants you to make yourself available to him. Available to him. Ready to be used for the master. If we look at Saul, who became Paul, 
a man of a very quick temper who did a lot of knee-jerk reactions, but God was able to use him. He cut off somebody's ear with a sword. That shows that he had great anger. But still, God used him to reach a message that reached 3,000 souls. God can use anybody. Think of his journey into Jerusalem. He rode on a donkey, a colt that had never been ridden before. Who would have thought that God would use a colt, a donkey? God can use anybody and anything to accomplish his purpose and his will. Your place in God is waiting for you to take it up along with whatever talents, whatever gifts you may have. Many times we go on in life and we feel that we're being overlooked. You're not happy with the way things have gone, you have gone and you're not happy with the way people are treating you. There's a space in God for you that fits you. The Israelites were told to use hewn stones to rebuild this wall. Why hewn? Hewn means that you were cut out. You were chopped out. You were shaped. You were rounded. You were put on the potter's wheel and you were shaped. You were molded by the hand of God to fit that space that's awaiting for you. Hallelujah. His hands are outstretched. He's waiting for you. Why delay? Why make it vain excuses? That space can only be filled by you. It's a proper fit for you. You go to the shop and you buy clothes and it's the right colour. It's the right style. You try it on, but somehow it just didn't fit exactly as how you would want it. But it's the nearest fit that you can find. You bring it home, you try it on, and you turn in the mirror and you look and you look and you think, you know what, if I just take it in a little bit there, if I just drop there a little bit and a little bit of handiwork and hey presto, it fits as how you would want it to fit. But thank God our processing doesn't start until we accept God into our lives. That's the time he will put you on the mass, on the potter's wheel. That's the time he will turn you. That's the time he will make a talk. That's the time he will lengthen something. That's the time he will shorten something. That's the time he will pour in the oil and the wine and heal that hurt that we've been going through on a daily basis. Why delay? Fill your space today in God. Fill your space today in God. You are in a tight spot. It doesn't suit you. You're trying to fit a round ball into a square peg. It doesn't work. Right now where you are in your life, it's not working. You don't fit there. You don't belong there. Why not take up that space in God that has been made, that has been hewn, that has been chopped out, that has been shaped, that is the perfect fit for you. Many times we're not happy with the way we look. My hair's too long, my hair's too short, my eyes are not the right colour. God, I've put on too much weight. Lord, I need to lose some weight. To fit into something that you had in your wardrobe years ago. And during this lockdown, they're telling you to shop within your wardrobe. Revisit your wardrobe and get something out. Many of us can't do that because if you go in there and you get out, you're just going to end up with a pile of clothes that don't fit you and never fitted you when you bought it in the first place. But that perfect spot is waiting for you in God. It's already been hewn out. It's been hewn out of stone. Why stone? Stone is strong. It's durable. It's stable. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to be in God. Strong, stable, durable, long lasting. Only God can accomplish that in our hearts and our lives. We are fragile. We can't take the knocks of this world. Many will tell you that they've come up through the school of hard knocks and that's why they have been, that's why they are 
the way they are. I've suffered. I know about pain. I know about hardship. And that's what's made me the way I am. Why not go back on the potter's wheel? Why not be reshapen? Why not be remolded under the hand of God? Hallelujah. The other thing I look think of when I look at this scripture is that the wall was weak. No longer sturdy. No longer fit for purpose. And many of us are going along in life and we're just making, you know, the best out of it, the best of what we can out of it. But why live your life on a hit and miss when you can come to Christ and be guaranteed the peace, the joy, the contentment, the forgiveness of your sins? Your past will be deleted in the hand of God, under the hand of God. The builder, when he's making a wall, hewn stones. That means he's looking at every single stone. He was looking at everybody individually. He's not thinking, oh, these just look all similar. I'll just put all of these together. No, God knows us as individuals. You're not just going to be grouped together under the heading Christian. No, you will fit into your space. Your God designed, ordained space. That will fit you this morning. I don't care how big you are, how smooth you think you are, how well under control you think you have it. If you haven't got God in your life, something is missing. Your life is incomplete without him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cracks and flaws appear within our lives. Appear within us as bricks in the fabric of society and they can't be fixed. You go through your whole life with that flaw there. But let God hewn you. Let God round you. Let God shape you and put you where you should be. There's no um, excuse that you can make this morning to the Lord. He's seen it all before. He knows it. He knows you as an individual. Why walk around incomplete, rejected, feeling hurt, feeling abused by society, feeling ill-treated, feeling overlooked, feeling unworthy. Come and fill your space in God. Come and fill your space in God. It says in that same scripture, the sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. When we look at sycamores, why sycamores? In that time, sycamores were very common, grew plentifully all around the place, but the wood was spongy. The wood was spongy. And do you know what a sponge does? A sponge just soaks up everything around it. And the only way to get rid of what has been absorbed is to squeeze it, to squeeze it, to put it under pressure. But then it just fluffs up, ready to absorb again. The same old rubbish that you've been going through day after day. But there's time to make a change. Today is the day for a change in your life. The cedars are now cut down. And we're going to rebuild with cedar. Why cedar? Cedar is a strong wood, a tall wood, beautiful looking wood. That's how you would be in God. Tall, strong, beautiful, fulfilling your God given purpose on this earth. God is just looking for ordinary things, ordinary people. That song of Danny Bell says, God is looking for people that he can use. He's looking for you. He's looking for me. 
ordinary people ordinary people and everyday people struggle to be something out of the ordinary but God is looking for something that can give him glory that can give him honor and this can only be accomplished in our lives when we give over to God and allow him to put us in our rightful place to give him the glory and the honor that is due unto him if we look at some of these structures that have been made out of stone they have lasted through the years through the centuries they're still visible now long lasting still good for purpose may need a little bit of repair now and again but the original structure still stands we can't stand by ourselves we need the help of the Lord so this morning I implore you fill your space in God's kingdom a space specifically designed for you it's your fit it's your fit and God will smooth you up he will round you up to fit perfectly into that space thank you for listening this morning as we tell you thanks God for hearing and answering our cries as we give them unto you in Jesus name Almighty God and our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I bow at your feet, Lord, giving honor unto thee. Thou God of our salvation, thou art brought us out of bondage and have set us free. Because it is written, whom the Son set free is free indeed. Father, this morning I come to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, thine only begotten Son, giving honor unto thee, Lord. You said, let everyone that thirst come it unto thee. Father, we know this morning, as the scripture said, we need no money. Heavenly Father God, to buy your word this morning, because you give it to us freely. You preserve them for us. They are our life this morning. And we can depend upon them, Father God, for your blessing. So I ask in the name of Jesus this morning. It's a season that we are living in that we have never seen before. Many are so called God confused this morning, troubled about the coronavirus. But God, I look to you this morning because I know, Father, you have the remedy. You alone have the remedy. You alone this morning are the healer of the body, of the soul, and spirit, and mind of men. So I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that as your word should go forth this morning, and your man servant, sustain, and minister, will you let him speak fluently this morning? Will you let your word reach some stubborn hearts this morning? Break down the inner thoughts of men, that men will run to you this morning. Will come to thee, Father. Oh God, they will not think, Heavenly Father God, have pain for your word this morning. Because your word are free. You give it to all men free. You die for the whole nation this morning. Oh God and our Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will speak in every heart this morning. Heavenly Father, that will listen to your word, that there will be, Heavenly Father, crying out to thee, hearts, my God, bowing down to thee, hearts running to you this morning to seek you, Father, for whom thou art. Will you touch your people everywhere this morning? Oh, God of heaven, this morning, let the Holy Ghost direct your word to every individual heart this morning, that will listen, my God, to your man's servant. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for an outpouring of the anointing in the lives of men this morning, that they had a sheep, Lord. Remember the scripture said, that, oh, God, had a sheep of thy heart, which is not yet of this fold, them also you must bring. Father, so I pray this morning that your word will go out, that there will be some running unto thee, men crying out, Lord, for seeing the need of bowing before Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. Bring them in from the north, bring them in from the south, from the east, and from the west. Holy God of heaven this morning, 
I am asking in the name of Jesus that you will direct your word this morning and that you will bless your man servant using for your glory this morning. Let a special anointing come down upon him this morning. Let the word that is coming out of his mouth this morning be like fire in the hearts of men, Father. Oh God, to revive us, your people, this morning, to revive this nation, to know that they need a God, Heavenly Father, to serve in spirit and in truth. Bless him, I pray, and bless, oh God, the nations this morning, that we listen to your word, I pray, Father. I ask these mercies in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for joining with us this week. I want to thank all those who have participated, thanking our Reverend Harper for bringing the word. And I trust that you will have been blessed. And as you go into this week, may the favor of God cover you. May you understand that he is on your side and that he stands with you. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion and power now and forevermore. Amen. Mm.